Hi everybody, we're out in the garden today for our science lesson with Millie. It's super hot, so I'm gonna send her inside after this. But I just wanted to show you, she's gonna show you what we need for our science activity today. So we're going to be doing the book, Look What I Did With a Leaf. And obviously we're gonna need some leaves for this activity, as well as some glue and paper. So, oh, you're checking out the leaves, Millie? It's nice and shady in there, right? It's pretty hot. We're in the middle of a heat wave, so I don't blame her. She's going to get to go back into the air conditioning. And I am going to stay out here because, well, it's always nice, right, to be in nature. All right, Millie, come give him a boop. Oop. So today we're going to be reading excerpts from this book called Look What I Did With a Leaf. And it's by Morteza E. Sohi. And this is um, more of a crafting book rather than a story book. But the illustrations are amazing. So I really, I thought that I would share them with you. So we've got Look What I Did With a Leaf. And then we'll do an art activity using elements from nature. Have you ever really looked at leaves? In the fall, they shout, look at me, with crunchy, crackling noises in bright reds, oranges, and yellows. It is wonderful to see so many leaves at once, but such a bounty keeps us from taking the time to stop and look and take notice of just one. Making animals with leaves is an adventure that will open our eyes to each leaf's special beauty. What season is it? In the spring and summer, most of the leaves you find will be green. But as you'll see, there are lots of shades of green in nature. Look at all the different shades of green that were used to make this elephant. Right, so even though it's all green, they're all different kinds of green. In autumn, you will have a rainbow of leaf colors to choose from. Although coniferous, which are evergreen trees, stay green all year round, the leaves of deciduous trees put on quite a flashy show before they fall to the ground. And we're gonna learn more about those in, a, in an upcoming lesson. To make leaf animals, you want to train your artist's eye. By combining nature's bounty of color in new and creative ways, your animals will come vividly to life. Here, the artist used something called contrast. Contrast is when you use opposite colors to draw attention to your artwork. So you see how there's bright yellow eyes against the green. Those are contrasting colors because they are so different from one another. You can find strong contrasting colors and you will see how nature gives us reds and browns, the same colors that it does in animals fur and birds feathers. Shape and size. As you collect your leaves, you will notice that they come in different shapes and sizes, as well as different colors. There are star-shaped leaves, heart-shaped leaves, fan-shaped leaves, mitten-shaped leaves, long and narrow leaves, and even needle-shaped. Their edges are different too. We've got leaves with saw-shaped edges, rounded edges, oval, wavy edges, pointed lobes, and rounded lobes. So there's many, many different ways that you can collect and sort your leaves. Saw-shaped leaves capture the feathers and textures of a rooster's body, while these lobed leaves make this frog's feet look very realistic. 
Long, narrow leaves work well for the fox's legs. So, right, depending on what kind of leaves you collect, you might choose to make one different kind of leaf creature or another. Leaves can also be sorted by size, right? So, when you are collecting leaves for your leaf animal, you have to consider the size. Large leaves are good for making large animals, and small leaves are good for making mice, right? Or even using facial features, right? So for like the eyes, you might use small leaves. Another artist technique you might use is layering. So once you've collected all of your colors, shapes, and sizes, you can layer them on top of one another for a more complex design. So you can see the mane of this lion is all layered leaves, and the tail of this peacock is all layered, right? So in the peacock, they're using contrast and shape and layering to bring this pattern to life. But you don't have to just limit yourself to one animal. You can make a scene. Right, here are some fish underwater. And the rest of the book is about preparing the leaves, which we know how to do already because we've had lessons in this. So you can dry them out, same as we did with our pressed flowers or you can put them in place and put them with a heavy book on top and then when they dry out, put them in a frame or put them underneath contact paper. And this just tells you the materials. So for this, you're going to need leaves and glue and some paper, which we all have ready to go. So the next part is about the life cycle of the leaf, but we're gonna save that for a different lesson. We're actually gonna save that for tomorrow's lesson because that's what tomorrow's lesson is all about. So I'm gonna clip in and we'll get started, okay? And we'll make our own special leaf creation. Okay, so we're all clipped in and I have gone around my yard and collected leaves of all different shapes and sizes. Now because it's summer, all of my leaves are green but they're different shades. And I took special care to pay attention that not all of my leaves were the same. So these have sort of pointed lobes on them. This one has sort of a sawtooth. Let me actually clear these away so you can see it on the white background. A sawtooth, these maple leaves have sort of pointy, pointy edges. Then we've got these trees, these leaves from a locust tree. They're smooth. And these are my wisteria. They're a little bit ovally. These are from my rhododendron. So I'm gonna take a look at my leaves. When, when we do this in, in science class at school, I encourage children to sort of play with the leaves and lay them out and see. Oh, you know what I see when I look at this? You know what that looks like to me? It looks like it's a lobster. I didn't think it would come so easily. Sometimes when you start laying out the leaves, you start to see different kinds of patterns, but I might go with the lobster. Gotta figure out a way to make the tail. You might have to pinch or cut some of these, and then we need little things for the eyes of the lobster. Now, remember we talk about contrast, so I'm gonna turn these uh, with the back 
And then I've got maybe these that I could use for eyeballs from my dogwood. So you're gonna play around with your leaves and create a creature. So that could be a lobster. Or if I do it maybe this way, let's see, what could we do? If we make it with a, we like the way that looks? I don't know what that could be. Ooh, ho, ho, ho. Anybody see what I see? Let me take this off. So what do you see when you look at this? You know what I see? I almost see a stegosaurus. And if I layer it, it even looks more like a dinosaur. But let's keep playing. Let's see what else we can make, right? Because that's the nice thing about STEM. There's always a little bit of room for art. So let's see, I've been thinking these were legs, but let's change it, let's see. What if we pick some of these guys? And then what should we use for a body? Maybe this, and then that petiole could be the tail. We did like a turtle. Put some flippers and hmm. so we'll do maybe a turtle. But I think of all the things that I made, I think I like that dinosaur the best. So we're gonna go back, although I think I like these legs better. So we're gonna start, and this is just regular Elmer's glue, and you just give it a stick. And a stick, remember the rhyme, a dot, not a lot, because we learned in STEM class the more glue you add, the longer it takes to dry. So we don't really want to overdo it with the glue because then your creation never really dries. And so we're going to layer these on so it'll be like a roof. Right? That's what Stegosaurus means, roof lizard. Even though we never got to get to our dinosaur unit because we stopped but we'll get there eventually maybe when we come back in September maybe we'll kick it off with the dinosaur lesson so we'll go like that and then I like these little things for his eyes and every dinosaur or at least a stegosaurus needs a tail and if I'm not mistaken, didn't Stegosaurus have? Clubs on its tail? So we'll tuck, not clubs, but spikes. And that will be its spiked tail. So we've got our Stegosaurus. And if we want to use contrast and layering, we can do some um, bottom down, and then we can do others bottom up. So we've got all of his root, all of his uh, roof plates on his back. And so that is the deal. Now it's quite hot. Millie's been inside because she was running for the shade the minute we got out here. And we will see you tomorrow. Be good.